even if I don't have this statement also fine I can execute the program there will be no error for me from here the control goes to that function where exactly I have defined even if I don't have this statement also fine I can execute the program there will be no error for me in the function call if you have any arguments that is what I will call it as the actual argument Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another important and interesting sessions on functions. My dear students, it's going to be very interesting because we have already discussed the basic concepts of functions in my previous session. So what is that I have in the session then? So let's have a quick look. Before that, let's have a recap. So yes, in the previous session, I have discussed how do I define the function? What is the syntax to define the function is what I have discussed with all of you. Along with that, it's very important that I have to remember the different types of functions that we have discussed, different types of functions. So please go back and check the syntax of these two. So fine, I have discussed that how do I define the function and different types of functions. Now, what is that I have to understand in this session? So let's have a quick look. So function call, what exactly the function call is all about and how do I define the function call? How do I declare the function call? Where do I use the function call? All those things I will be speaking with respect to this function call in today's session. Along with that, I have the next topic that is types of arguments. Especially I have uh, two types of arguments. I will be discussing each type now with an example how exactly each one is different. So let's start without wasting much of your time. First of all, I have the function call. So I have listed out a lot of points here. So let me summarize it all these points for you guys. So let me make it very simple and easy for all of you to understand the concept of function call. I have defined the function call and I have stored somewhere in my program. But, so how do I execute, when do I execute will be decided by one single statement. So that is function call. So wherever I execute or wherever I have that line or the statement that is function call from there. So the control will go to that particular function and the execution of the function starts there. So what is the meaning of it? Imagine I have 100 lines of my program. Here somewhere I have the function call that is one single line. So I'm executing all these statements, but here I will encounter the function call. Automatically from here the control goes to, from here the control goes to that function where exactly I have defined. So after executing all the statements, again this statement will be executed. That's what you need to understand. So please observe, I have around 100 lines of program in between I have the function call statement from there the control of the execution goes to the function where I have defined the function after executing all the functions whatever I have defined in the function so again the control comes back to the next statement and it starts its execution that's what you need to understand with respect to the function call how exactly it is working so I will show you that in detail please look at this program let's trace and understand what exactly the function call is all about so guys I think I don't have to define or I don't have to discuss this statement which is uh, already known to everybody now so guys what is this this is what I will call it as a signature of a function okay so what is the return type so I have the return type as a int so int in the sense what this function returns some value all right, so then after that name of the function I have. So what is the name of the function? Max is the name of the function. So fine. So how many parameters I have here? I have two parameters. So I have two parameters of int. All right, so I have two parameters of type int. So I have num1 and I have num2. So fine. And I'm ending this statement with the semicolon is what you need to observe. So fine. Even if I don't have this statement also fine, I can execute the program. There will be no error for me. All right, so finally, let's imagine that I have. So after that, what is the next thing that I have? So the main function, what is this main function? Main function in the sense you all know the program execution happens or starts from this function. What happens? So you all know that the program execution starts from main function. That's what you need to observe here. So fine, the program executing from here. So what is that I have? 
So I have int a, I have declared a variable of type int. Okay, so that's what I will call it as a a. So a is holding a value of 100 in the same way b is also holding a value of 200. So fine. The next one I have one more variable that is ret and even that variable is of type int. That's what you need to understand. So look at this statement very clearly. This statement is what I will call it as a function call. This statement is what I will call it as a function call. So my dear students, so what is this? Observe this. What is this max? Max is a name of the function that I have. Max is what? Max is the name of the function and I'm passing two parameters. How many parameters I have here? I have two parameters. So that's why I'm passing A and B. What is the value of A? A in the sense 100, B in the sense 200. I'm passing that. Okay. At the end of the statement, I have this semicolon. So this statement is what I will call it as a function call. So what is the syntax of a function call now? So you have to write the name of a function. You have to write the name of the function. And if you have any parameters in the function, so you have to match the type and the number of parameters. You have to match the type and number of parameters. At the end, you have to give the semicolon. So that is the syntax of the function call. I repeat once again, listen to me carefully. What did I say? Name of the function you have to return. Yes, I have written the name of the function. What is the name of the function? Max is the name of the function. How many parameters I have here? So I have two parameters. How many parameters I'm passing? Two parameters. You might get a doubt. Sir, here you have taken int, but you have not mentioned anything. Please understand that I'm passing a value now. What is that I'm doing? I'm passing the value. So if I'm passing the value, I don't have to mention the data type for that variable. That's what you need to understand. All right, so fine, this is a function call. So from here, the control, control of the execution of the statement moves to the function called max. So automatically the control will come to this, okay? So I have int num1, so a, whatever I am passing, a, okay, parameter, that value will be copied to num1 and b, whatever I'm passing, that value will be copied to num2. What is the value of a? The value of a is 100. What is the value of b? The value of b is 200. So fine. So please observe here. What is that I'm finding? So I'm finding the biggest of two numbers. I'm finding the biggest of two numbers. What is the return type here? Return type is int. What is the meaning of int? If I have my return type as int, it returns some value. So biryani example. Remember, I'm preparing the biryani and I'm giving it out of the house. That's what you need to observe. Here I'm preparing the biryani and I'm giving out of the biryani out of the house. That's what you need to observe here. So fine. I have the variable int result. So fine. I have. So what is that I'm checking here? Num1 is greater than num2. If this is true, return num1. Is it? So observe here. What is that I'm doing? So I'm, I'm not doing return num1. Instead, the result, whatever I have in the num1, I'm storing it in the result. I'm storing it in the result. So fine. Suppose if this is if this condition is not true, so what is that I'm doing? I'm storing the num2 in the result. After that, I'm returning the result. I'm returning the result. So in this result, what is that I have? So the biggest number among two. So if for example, I have A and B. So which one is having a bigger number? So that number is stored in this variable. So this number is what I'm returning. So this written statement returns the value the biggest value. So fine, that value will come back to this statement. So from this statement, I'm using the assignment operator. So the biggest value will be assigned to ret. The biggest value will be assigned to ret. That's what I'm printing here. Observe here. That's what I'm trying to print the biggest value. So I have the variable ret. ret prints the biggest number. That's what you need to observe. At the end, I have written zero. So this is how I will be understanding the function call. That's what you need to observe here. All right. So this is all about the function call with an example. Moving on to the next type that is different types of arguments. So please make a note of it. This is going to be very important with respect to two marks. How exactly I have uh, these two types of arguments? Let's understand this. The first one that I have is actual arguments. What is that I have? Actual arguments. What is the meaning of actual arguments? So please observe, whenever you have the function call, in the function call, if you have any arguments, that is what I will call it as an 
factual arguments. Say for example, so guys, I have this A and B, right? So this is what I will call it as a actual arguments. This is what I will call it as a actual arguments. The arguments which you have in the function call, that's what I will call it as a actual arguments. The arguments that you have in the function definition, that's what I will call it as a formal arguments. All right, this is the only difference that you need to observe with respect to different types of arguments. That's what they have given here. Observe the function call statement contains the name of the function and the list of arguments to be passed. That's what I will call it as a actual arguments. The next one that I have is formal arguments. Whatever you have in the function definition, that's what I will call it as a formal arguments. So guys, this is all about the function call and the different types of arguments for all of you in today's session. By saying this, I've come to an end of this session. Thank you. Bye-bye.